Hey everybody, I wanted to do one more thing with our bouncing ball idea. And uh, when we left off with this, we had made a game. Two balls, each having keyboard control and uh, competing goals and a way to keep score. And we had organized all of that uh, with functions. Uh, so this was a, a pretty nice game. And actually with these skills in here, you could make all sorts of interesting kinds of games. This is two-dimensional though. It's a, a flat screen kind of two-dimensional game. And before I left this whole bouncing ball idea, I wanted to approach how we would begin to think about uh, bouncing a ball in three dimensions. So we're going to see if we can try to do that today. So I'm just going to open a new project. Now, Scratch makes it really easy to keep track of things in two dimensions. It's got a built-in X and Y position for every sprite. Actually, let's get rid of this guy and find our trusty ball again. There we go. But I'm going to ignore these X and Y position uh, built-in variables right now and just create all of my own variables for everything I want to keep track of. And I'm going to want to keep track of an X position and a Y position. And then because this is three dimensions, I want to keep track of a Z position. So Y is up and down. X is left and right. Z you can think of as deeper into the screen or uh, closer up to your eyes where you're looking at it. We're also going to have a vector that has three components now instead of two. So there'll be an X component, a Y component, and a Z component of the vector. So let's just make a variable that represents those three uh, components. So vector X, vector Y, and vector Z. All right. So what we did with a simple up, down, left, right bouncing ball is we created a forever loop. We put some numbers in the in the vectors and we just uh, set it going. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to grab a, a forever loop. And we will actually, let's go ahead and initialize an X, Y, and Z position. And then um, uh, we'll put some numbers in the vectors to begin with too. So we're going to set X position to, let's just give it a zero to start with. We're going to set Y position to zero as well. And Z position, I'm going to set to 100. And I'll tell you why. The way I'm thinking about the Z is that we'll use it as a percent value for the size of our sprite. Because as the 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 Z value gets closer and closer to the to the front of the screen, we want this to get bigger. So that'll represent large numbers of Z. This, where the plane of the of the screen itself, we'll think of that as Z value of 100. And then as Z gets smaller, uh, it, the, it will appear to go away from us because we'll shrink the sprite. So I don't know if that was very clear, but that's what I'm thinking. And hopefully it'll become clear as you see how we do it here. So we're going to set the Z position to 100. And then for, let's see, we'll need to set the vectors. So our X vector. I'm just going to give it us a reasonably small positive value, so it'll start moving in a positive direction. Y vector, same thing. And the Z, let's make it start moving away from us. So we'll set the Z to a negative 4. So it'll start moving backwards, back away from us. So at this point, a 4, 4, negative 4 means that it's going to move in this general direction on the X and Y and then back into the screen on the Z. So those are our initial values. Let's put a green flag on that. And then in our forever loop, the things that we need to do, we need to update the X and Y position and the Z position, and then we need to check if it bounces. Let's just start by updating our X and Y positions and Z positions. So we're going to change the X position by the X vector. And we'll do the same for Y and Z. 
So there's y position, change that by vector y. And z position will change by vector z. OK, so now we've got the right values each time through the forever loop in x position, y position, z position. Now we actually have to set the position of the sprite to those locations. So let's go to looks, sorry, in motion. And we're going to change or set x, y. Uh -huh. Let's just use the go to, because then we can do x, y all at once. So there's the go to, and we'll just put in our x position, y position. Oops, not the vector. And now for z, we have to do something a little bit different. To, to make it go to the right place, um, we need to actually uh, shrink or enlarge it. So we're going to go to looks, and we're going to set the size to z per position percent. To start out with, our z position is 100. Then we change it by negative 4. So the first time we update this, it's going to be 96% of the size. It's just getting a little bit smaller. Each time through the forever loop, it'll get a little bit smaller. Let's actually click this and see what happens. Hmm. Should have gone back to 0, 0. Oh, there it is. Yep. So you can see. Oh, uh, yeah. So it starts out at 96% and it gets smaller as it goes back. <laughs> it gets very small very fast, doesn't it? So there it is receding off into the distance. Let's add in some bouncing here and see how we'll have to adjust these numbers. So our bouncing we did before with if then statements. And we'll do that again. So if the x position is greater than a certain value. And x goes from negative 240 to 240. So let's just bounce it at 220. Give some room for the radius of the ball. And then remember to bounce it, we are taking the, the vector and multiplying it by a negative 1. So we get a negative value of itself. So if it's negative, it goes to positive. If it's positive, it goes to negative. So we're going to set vector x to vector x times negative 1. And we'll do something similar, just with a different um, inequality for the other side. So if x is, oops, this should have been greater than 220. It's going to be less than negative 220. OK, so now if it goes greater than 220, it bounces. If it goes less than negative 220, it bounces. So we've got it bouncing on the x. Let's do the same thing for the y. So all we need to do here is change our variables. So this is y position. And y goes up to 180. So we'll put this at um, so 170. Oops, just did the wrong one, didn't I? should still be x position. This should be y position. So greater than 220, then we're going to set vector y to vector y times negative 1. And well, we don't want 220. We want 170 and negative 170 here. This should be y position. And we'll change vector y. 2 vector y times negative 1. All right, so we've got x and y bouncing. Let's bounce the z as well. So this is going to be slightly different. 
we're going to check if the Z position is greater than, and I'm going to say 400, because I want this thing to get pretty big as it comes toward us. And 400% seems like a good amount for it to get big by. So let's change this to Z position and this to vector Z. Whoops. Get in there. Okay, and then here, I saw that it was getting pretty small. So I'm gonna just say 50. I don't want it to get smaller than 50% of its size. So we'll bounce it there. And we gotta change these to Z position. And vector Z. And vector Z. Wait, I think that should have been vector Z, right? Yeah, glad I caught that. OK, so we're bouncing x at 220 and negative 220. I'm just reading through my code to make sure I haven't got anything out of place. We're bouncing y at 170 and negative 170. And we're bouncing z at 400 and at 50. Yeah, I think that looks right. So let's give this a shot and see what happens. Aha, uh -huh, coming toward the screen. Ooh, bouncing, bouncing. Uh-oh, it's getting way bigger than I thought it would be. I think I've done something wrong here. So it looks like it's not checking if, oh, it should have been Z position here. That's right. <laughs> Let's try that again. All right, there it goes. It bounced off the back pretty quickly. It's coming up toward that bounced off the front. I'm going to hide these variables so we get to see the whole screen there. So in terms of 3D-ness, this is clearly lacking a sense of a background or shadow or anything like that. You can't see where the rear wall is, but you do get a sense of the ball operating now in a three-dimensional space. It's pretty cool. All right. Well, that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. Uh, thanks.